Hey, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast with me, Rob Kosberg. Every week, I interview thought leaders and experts who have used the book to grow their income and their impact. So tune in weekly for these interviews so you can learn how to use your own best-selling book and go from hunting for clients and opportunities to instead being the hunted. All right. Hey, welcome, everybody. Rob Kosberg here. Super happy to be with you again for another episode of the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. Uh, happy to be with you with a great guest. Don Gallade is the best-selling author of In God We Trust and The Dollar We Worship. Very, very interesting title. Don is a 30-year veteran financial advisor and Christian movie producer and media producer. Uh, he works with blue-collar millionaires. I actually uh, like that. I think that's cool. Giving them simple, clean advice to help them to make the investments that they need to live the kind of life that they desire. And so, Don, really glad to have you with us today. Excited to talk about uh, uh, your expertise. Well, I'm humbled, but I'm, I thank you for having me on and you know what your organization has done for my practice with this book is just mind blowing. Oh, well, I, we're going to want to talk about how you've used your book. That's certainly part of it. But let's talk more about your expertise first and your magic. You know, I love the term blue collar millionaire. I love that. Why don't you define that for me? And then, you know, talk about how you help that individual, you know, because obviously they can make some wrong decisions. And I even want to share with you a couple of uh, situations from my own family that, you know, turn blue collar millionaire into blue collar broke. And so what is the define that for me? And let's start there. You know, it's a term and I don't know where I heard it. I don't even know if, if I made it up or if I heard it from somebody. But <laughs> I like it. It's a term that I've, I've used because, you know, the, there's people out there that have tons of money and they've got a team of investing people and, and teams of CPAs and accountants. But, you know, you get a guy that's had a decent job his whole life yeah. or several decent jobs if he had a change. And he's got like, you know, close to six, maybe sometimes even more digits in his 401k plan. And it's really his only investment. He doesn't have this big elaborate portfolio. He's just got eight, nine hundred thousand in his 401k plan. Now, here's the guy ready to retire. And, you know, he's like, okay, most people just like, all right, I'm going to turn on Social Security. I'm going to pull money out of my 401k. They never actually have the opportunity to sit down with somebody who's qualified to, first of all, who really cares about how they're about to take this next giant step in life and talk about income, taxes, estate planning, and they still need some of this money to continue to grow, even though they're spending it. And wrapping that all around this one investment that they've had their entire life that nobody's ever really given them any guidance on other than the human resource person saying, well, most people just do this. Right. So, you know, it's, I love the ability to help somebody that I can relate to, you know, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy, so to speak. Um, you know, I grew up in a middle-class family, fourth generation musician, you know, musicians didn't make a lot of bread as they say. <laughs> so uh, it's just neat to be able to give back what the gifts God he showed me to uh, how to help. Love it. Love it. You know, I, I referenced a story myself. You know, my, my father-in-law got out of the military, served during wartime in Vietnam, and uh, a high school diploma, but no college, but a great engineering mind. And he was hired by Motorola and worked for Motorola for over 30 years and ended up being a vice president at Motorola wow. as an engineer. He built uh, large Motorola plants. He retired, I don't know, 30 years ago now. But um, when he retired, all of his money was in Motorola stock, which yep. did exceptionally well up until the time it did not. Right. And uh, he met with a financial advisor when he was retiring. And uh, I can't for the life of me, I was too young and uninvolved at that time to be any kind of help or advice. But uh, for whatever reason, he was advised to leave his money in Motorola stock. One stock. It. Yeah, one stock. It plummeted. It's still a company now, but nothing like what Motorola was. Motorola made all the phones Motorola made long before iPhone or any of those things. And um, 
you know, fortunately he had a pension in those days, you know, you still had a pension, but you had a pension and, you know, high six figure, low seven figure in cash. And uh, fortunately, Social Security and his pensions, uh, his and his wife's carried them through. But I watched them go from, you know, having seven figures to having nothing. And uh, it was a it was a complete shocker to me. I know that this kind of stuff still happens, although it it's, it's probably, maybe it's rare, maybe it's not, but what are the big mistakes that people make? Like, you know, somebody is 50 or 55 and they're thinking about retiring in 10 years, or maybe they're close to retirement age. At what point, you know, what, what are the mistakes they make and what are the steps they should take? Sorry, that's a long question introduction, but I, you know, that's a real story in my life that's uh, painful. And, you know, Rob, I hear that story or, or facets of that story three to four times a day as I'm sitting across the desk from, wow. uh, from somebody. You know, it's all about advice and who do you get it from? Who do you trust with it? And what are their qualifications? And more importantly, what are they trying to sell you? Because, you know, I, I could go into the licensing and, the, you know, and all this other stuff. But the bottom line is this. Everybody's got an Aunt Millie and Aunt Millie knows everything. <laughs> now, Aunt Millie may be your wife. Aunt Millie may be somebody you work with. Aunt Millie may be your next door neighbor. But it's like they always listen to family and friends rather than they listen to the device of, of somebody who is a professional. If I had a problem with my sinuses, I would not go to a chiropractor. If I, you know, you match the need for what you, your specialist you need to their particular education. What I found is very simply, here's here's what I put, put when most people come into my office. Bob, you've heard many, 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 many times. You're supposed to buy low and sell. Hi. Nobody sells. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Yeah. All right. So, if nobody sells, why? Because the advice they're getting is don't sell. Well, why? Probably because somebody's making some coin off of the investments that they're choosing them not to sell. Because if somebody would have said to your dad, I think you should take this portfolio. Okay. And, you know, disclosures and everything are on my website. So, but if I think they should take this portfolio and we need to have a conversation about your risks, your goals, your dreams, your desires, we need to talk about long term, middle term, which is saying that's not even a word, mid goals of, of five years or less. And then short term, which is, you know, I got to pay the rent tomorrow. And then you take that big chunk of that million dollars, that millionaire, million dollar blue collar guy's money. And we take it and put it into buckets. we got a red bucket, a yellow bucket, and a green bucket. Red bucket is stuff that you're willing to have at risk. And then there's intermediate buckets, and then there's long-term buckets. So the long story to that answer is you need to first meet with somebody who is going to have a conversation with you that's going to be a lengthy conversation. You want to talk about your goals, your dreams, your desires. And then from that, we put your money in things that are suitable. And suitable is very, very, very important because if that money is all in one stock, that's not suitable for anybody at any age. And it's uh, it breaks my heart when I hear the horror stories of how people lost everything. But you know what, Rob? There's just as many people that don't want to hear it when you try to give them the advice. And that's what I've been able to do with my book is take these stories, Mm. real life stories, and the names are changed to protect the innocent and create scenarios in the book that says, here's what happened to these people. Mm. Here's what happened to those people. And ironically, it happens to talk about the scriptures that are involved that they could turn to for advice. Good. And it's mind blowing when you meld all that together. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Now, obviously, you're a Christian and probably serve a great deal of Christians as well. Those that, you know, especially mm-hmm. someone that would buy your book. Mm-hmm. Uh, would have a desire for, you know, what are God's thoughts about uh, or what does the Bible say about about money, about finances, et cetera? In that regard, like what have you seen? What kind of benefit have you seen from the book serving that community, both in the way of people just reading your book and saying, wow, this helped me a ton, as well as the, you know, actual new customers, new clients, et cetera, that that uh, are coming into your company because of the book. 
Well, you know, it's funny. The book started as it was a hobby. Okay. I didn't really expect it to go anywhere. Um, We homeschooled. My wife homeschooled three children. I just bought the books. And when she was on a mission trip one time in Africa, I was playing Mr. Mom. And God said, I want you to write a book. And I was like, yeah, I never read a book. You want me to write a book? So um, I'm kidding. So I did almost just, you know, kind of going through the motions. And then something happened that I learned that there are companies Companies that are everybody has in their portfolio. You probably have them right now and are unaware of this, but there are some companies that when you give them money to invest, they're taking their profits and they're investing in things that you would think are not aligned with Christian values. Gotcha. Abortion, human trafficking, you know, some horrible, horrible things. When I found out that here I am making a pro-life film and doing Christian music and doing all this great stuff, and then I found out I'm giving people advice on XYZ stock and XYZ mutual fund, and that company is funding Planned Parenthood, it blew my mind. Mm. There's got to be a way. Well, then I found out that there's actually a, a concept called biblical responsible investing. And if they go to my website or any of the websites from the great companies that I represent that do this type of stuff, there's a little quiz. You could type in what you've got. And it'll tell you, you know, on a scale from uh, zero to a hundred, what this company's about. So you can find out what your portfolio invests in with their money. Some legislation literally just passed minutes ago that blew my mind with abortion and people are going to be up in arms and it's going to be the talking points of all of the news tonight. And yet we can eliminate, we can defund some of these groups with our own 401ks Hmm. and people are unaware of it. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. So so you're on your website, if I'm understanding correctly, on your website, somebody can type in a mutual fund that they are holding or investing in, and it will show, you know, uh, on some type of scale, if this yeah. is uh, maybe aligned with their values. Is that accurate? That's very that accurate. Is accurate. There's a, one of the organizations I, I, I do work with is called Inspire, and Inspire has this really, really neat tool. And basically, every company, let's just say company XYZ, and a zero is neutral, and it goes from zero to negative 100 and zero to positive 100. Let's just say that there is a fast food restaurant, very popular fast food restaurant that has a negative score. There's another fast food restaurant that has a positive score. And the difference is, it's what they choose to do with their funds, what sure. their mission statement is. And, and it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. So so you could say, hey, you know, I can get a similar return off of this stock as I did on that stock. Why would I want to not just maybe change that? Right. Now, of course, this is not investment advice and all of the disclosures involved. And we're just having a conversation sure. about what ifs. But, you know, when people would sit across the table, some people are very, very, very concerned about that. And some people aren't. And for that, we can talk about the book you're going to help me with next that I've already written. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> called Five Steps. So that's the secular version of what I do. Yeah. No, I, I look, I love this. I mean, you know, people that are listening to this podcast or watching this YouTube video have their own beliefs and convictions. <laughs> and whatever they are, they are. Uh, mm-hmm. However, if you have a, a Christian belief or a Christian belief system, it would seem to me that it would behoove you to figure out what you're actually investing in. And so obviously having those kinds of tools at your fingertips so you know, okay, that I prefer to invest my money and get a return on investment, but to invest my money for a return in things that are aligned with my values. Of course that Absolutely. makes makes perfect sense. I love that. It's no brainer. It's, it's really funny. No I, I've never heard anybody talk about that before, so that's really good. You know, it blew me away because the gentleman that runs Inspire, you know, they're out in California. They're probably not far from you. In the, in the Where I used to be. Where I'm, used to, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Florida now. I'm not in Pasadena anymore. I digress. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, they kicked me out because uh, COVID, they said that I was a non-essential business. And uh, me and my employees thought we were essential, but the governor didn't. So... <laughs> You know what? Yeah, that's best a thing that whole ever happened. Another podcast there, yeah, baby. That's, best thing that ever happened, man. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. yeah. I'm loving well, life. Well, anyway, yeah. This gentleman calls and he starts telling me about, you know, do you are you aware? And I'm like, 
No. And I, I already had my practice divided into two veins, if you will. I had GFS Financial Advisors, and then there was Kingdom Financial Ministry. And it was two separate uh, schools of thought. Yeah. And if somebody says, hey, listen, I care about biblical, responsible investing, well, then we go this path. And if somebody says, listen, man, I don't want to hear about that Bible stuff, but like you seem like an honest guy. Cool. Let's talk about this path. Yeah. And, you know, my job is not to preach. My job is to help. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny because, uh, as you can see, my camera in my actual green room that I have went down and I'm in my back office. So it looks very, um, you know, <laughs> looks like you're getting your dirty. hands dirty and you're working. Yeah. And that's, you know, it, it's funny. There's my blue collar millionaire set right behind me. So, <laughs> and that wasn't planned, but, um, it's interesting how it all just ties together. And yeah. the bottom line is at the end of the day, people just want to be with somebody they trust. Yeah. People just want to talk to somebody who's not going to give them this big, long lecture of, of, of why they need to do things. You know, it's like, make me money. Do your best to keep me from losing money. And along the way, let's talk about estate planning and taxes and life insurance and wills and how to title my house and, and all that other stuff and tie it all together. And, you know, sometimes when you get into that Christian line of thinking, sometimes there's some, uh, hey, man, I got this problem. You know, they just want somebody to vent to. And that's yeah. cool. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, uh, you, uh, you okay. become counselor as well, evidently. Huh? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I got, I got two ministers in the family now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. Well, let's shift gears a little. I, I love what you've shared. I know you've used your book to grow your business mm -hmm. and, uh, and that your book has done some, you know, interesting things. Maybe you could share a little bit about that. You obviously wrote your book to help people, but your book also helps you grow your business, grow your authority, et cetera. Talk to me a little bit about how your book has helped you to do those things. The first one I wrote 10 years ago, and I've tried some other organizations that now, I wouldn't even call them your competitors because they just did me dirty. And, you know, I got your email one day and I was like, mm, yeah, okay, here we go. And then I listened to it. I was like, wait, this guy's different. There's something different about this guy. And I figured, all right, let me give it a shot. And I'm good with the whole just meet with people and do what you got to do. But technology hates me. <laughs> And I've had struggles in that, you know, and, and the long story short is you've got people that just really, really held my hand through this process. Mm. And I didn't become a best-selling author. I became an international best-selling author in one day. Mm. One day. I was like, what? and there was like, there was like nine different countries and more than just one category within each one. It was just yeah crazy so i'm like all right I, I i gotta market this right away you know so and i'm doing the youtubes and the, the podcasts and, and all of that stuff and then it was crazy that like people existing clients said hey man this is awesome so then i had some existing clients that didn't know about the whole god part of the business i didn't know you did that right <laughs> And then I had some other Oops. people that were, yeah, yeah. And, you know, by the grace of God, the phone rings, you know, and it, it's, I, I guess that's another prop that I accidentally got into the message. But the uh, people I had in, after this story broke, the next day, I had a TV show where they called me. They reran the program like 70 times over the next like, you know, three weeks in different spots, different times in three different markets. Uh, a newspaper did an article and I did a radio show on a Christian uh, radio program. Amazing. They called me and it was the next day. All from the launch of your book. Yeah. From me telling the story of, of what happened in one day. Yeah. And I did all three of those wow. events in one day. And then that all happened the next day where all three of those things hit simultaneously. It was like, I cannot make this up. Amazing. Um, obviously, when you tell people that you want to help them do stuff with their money in a Christian way, God's like, yeah, OK, yeah. here we are. So, and it was awesome. I just, the referrals, the phone ringing, the emails, the, you know, I've ordered books a couple of times to send out and I've just uh, directing people to the Amazon links and I put the links right onto the website and, and it's just great. Love just it. totally changed everything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it was, and I guess, like I said, I spent pff, 40 or 50 grand trying to do something with this book before I met you. Wow. And for pennies on that dollar amount. 
your group did this. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I thank you, but your your folks did it. Your, well, <laughs> your, your secret sauce works, man. It's just uh, thank you, really Don. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. I I appreciate that. I mean, you're the one that wrote the book. These are your ideas, and uh, you're the one that has to do the media. And so, congratulations. I mean, thank you. so happy to, to hear that uh, that things are booming because of it. Um, you know, maybe a suggestion as well. You know, you have a lot of clients, and you even mentioned that some of your clients don't know like the full story. Yeah. Um, something that I would highly recommend and we recommend to our clients is, you know, set up a referral uh, strategy using your books, like get yeah. every one of your clients two to three copies of your book and uh, wow. and send them a nice letter letting them know that this is a gift and and what happened with the book. Tell your story in, in the letter and say, you know, maybe you know. Uh, we've had a number of clients who have requested books and for others, and so we thought we would just get this out to you because maybe you know somebody that this would be helpful for. It's and a great idea. I tell you what, to do something like that will make a huge impact. Now, look, it'll cost a little bit of money, but to print the book is only about $3, and then to mail it a couple of dollars more. So even if you sent three books out, you're only talking about 10 11 12 bucks per person. And yes, if, if you did that with you know, a thousand people, that's $12,000. But you know, if you did it with just four or 500 people, you're going to put your book in 1500 people's hands. Wow. The phone that's is gonna ring, phone's going to ring off the hook. Uh, that's it's, great advice. It's going to make a big difference. Anyway, just a thought. I don't normally do that on podcasts, but, but you had mentioned about the things that are coming in. And one thing we always want to do is is have a, a proactive response. Reactive is like, this is coming to me, but that eventually stops, right? Yeah. Uh, unless yeah. you're proactive and getting the book in the hands of the right people, and then it'll never stop, which uh, again, yeah, congratulations. Funny. Thanks. In the, the, when I did the first book and then I wrote the second and and I was going to do a third and I was like, no, nah, two things I'll never do again. <laughs> Write the third book and build a house. And you changed that for me. So I actually started the third book. It's basically called Nonprofit, but profit is spelled differently. Oh, nice. And the subtitle is Who Woke the Church? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, well, you might have some controversy <laughs> over all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So you it's embrace like, the controversy, though, I can yeah, tell. Yeah. <laughs> all good. All good. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, Don, let, let's do this. Let's give them some links. I'd like to give them a link. Obviously, they can search your book based on the title in Amazon, right. but let's give them a link to check that Inspire group um, okay. and any other links that you think would be helpful. Well, if they go to my main website, GFS hyphen advisors, okay. plural, that gives that's them- .com. That, that's .com. That's everything. Okay. And in there, there'll be a tag across the top that says BRI, Biblical Responsible Investing. And that leads them all down this path. The book itself, well, actually both books are, are if they go into inthedollarweworship.com, okay. that has the bio of the book and it shoots them right to the Amazon links. And uh, pretty much the website kind of just, you know, they, they intertwine where all of that data is in there. So there's from, I, I developed a speakers page because people are asking me to come speak. That's just simply dongolade.com. And some people say, Hey, tell me about this Christian movie you made and these Christian uh, songs. And well, that's under Don E. Gillette, <laughs> so it was just like, you know, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of thought involved in that one, but <laughs> <laughs> it worked. <laughs> nice, nice. Don, again, thanks for being on the podcast. Congratulations on uh, all the cool things that are happening with your book, my friend. And Thank I can't so wait to hear about book two and book three. It's going to be great. It's awesome. Thank you. I can't do it without you guys. You're awesome. Thank Appreciate you. your help. All right, man.